Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? All good. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, we've got something really cool to announce today that we've been working on for ages, and I've kind of been sweating with these guys. Sounds wrong. But um, for, for some time to try and get uh, this in a shape where we can actually tell you about the project that we've been, we've been working on. So it's going to be quite a lot of um, kind of a military precision exercise here as we kind of get up and all tell you a little bit about what we're doing with Fuse. Um, so I'm going to go first, I'm going to hand over to my colleagues here, and then I'm going to come back at the end just to round up. So I'll get started because I've got seven minutes before James pings me and tells me that I've been speaking for too long. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Dawson, and I am a very, very proud and happy and satisfied independently published author, and I have been for around about 10 years now. Uh, and in those 10 years, I've sold somewhere north of 6 million books um, all around the world. And I still say to my wife regularly, the, the kind of the best thing I ever did in my career after ha having a couple of um, near misses with some traditionally published titles at the start of my career, the best thing I ever did was hitting that button on Amazon and, and hitting upload and getting those, my first, my first Milton book up on the store. So one of the things I've, I've discovered over the course of that decade and I think one of the kind of the key moments that went, when, when I went from doing quite well to doing, doing a little bit better was figuring out how to use digital advertising and marketing techniques to get my books in front of uh, readers. And over the course of, of that time, one thing I think I'm fairly confident about saying now is that whereas in the past advertising was a luxury, I think now it is almost a necessity. There's so much competition out there. There are so many authors taught by people like me, um, sorry about that, to, to use Facebook ads and Amazon ads effectively, you kind of have to be able to shout to get over the noise now. Now, let me come forwards three years from my, from my first book to seven years ago. Um, James and I set up Self-Publishing Formula, and what we did in SPF was teach authors how to self-publish successfully. And it started with our Ads for Authors course, we've added Launchpad and some other content uh, subsequent to that, but in the course of those seven years, we've, told, we've taught over, over 15,000 authors now, and of that number, many of them have gone on to do really, really well, and some of our most famous and well-known alumni would include people like Shane Silvers, who writes fantasy in the UK. We've got um, several authors writing regional crime books like J.M. Dalgleish, and our most famous alumnus, without doubt, is Lucy Score, um, who, when she took the course, was selling some books, but you know, not enough to kind of move mountains. Lucy now, I've kind of lost track of the number of books that she sells, it's in the millions, and her books go to the top of whatever charts they're being counted for, so she's an absolutely fantastic success story. Now, one of the things that we've also discovered in SPF was of those authors who took the course, obviously not everyone is gonna be able to, to, to get, them, get ads to work for them. So we found that we were contacted reasonably regularly by authors who wanted us to be able to help them with their marketing. Some would ask us to publish on their behalf, others would ask us like as if we were an agency to advertise on their behalf. And I always said no. My philosophy on that was I was very worried that I would do something bad and would end up losing them sales and actually cause damage to their career. So I always said no. The thing that changed that for me was we were contacted by the parents of one of our students, a guy called Robert Story, and James will tell you a little bit about him in a minute. But Robert wrote um, science fiction books and did it really well, and using the lessons he learned in the course, was able to build a six-figure career for himself. Unfortunately, Robert suffered for all his life with some fairly serious medical complaints and, as a result, lived in a lot of pain. And we were contacted by his parents and they said, look, he's killed himself. So we were terribly upset to hear that that had happened. But they asked us whether we could help. They wanted to continue getting his books out to the readers that love them so much. And also, obviously, they were making an income and they wanted that to continue too. James and I spoke about that and I realized that my concerns about damaging books were misplaced in this case because without Robert or anybody else stepping in, it was obvious that those books, and this was already happening, they were just going to fade away and, and, and not going to sell anymore. So there was no real downside to us getting involved. So we did, and we, we took over those books. We set up a little company called Fuse, um, and we discovered reasonably quickly that we were able to do a good job on those books, and they went from fading away to coming back again, and we've done pretty well. They're kind of the too long didn't read version of that is that Robert's parents are really, really happy and for the three or four years we've been publishing them, they've continued to sell really strongly. 
How long have I got, James? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes, excellent. Right, so moving on, um, we, James and I have been kind of talking about this for a while. We felt that um, we took on some more authors and they did well too. James will tell you about a couple of those as well. But we decided that it was a, this model worked. My qualms about taking on other books were assuaged a bit. I felt that we could do it. And we started to add authors to our roster. And they started to sell stronger and stronger too. So over the last year or so, James and I have been thinking about how can we hit the accelerator a little bit and, and scale Fuse as much as we can. So you'll probably know if, you're in the, if you've been in the space long enough, there are lots of kind of what I call boutique indie publishers now. People like Bookature originally, Joffy Books in the UK, Storm is um, the kind of successor to Bookature. And we felt that there was a really good chance to do something similar but better with Fuse. So we started talking. Um, I started putting together the dream team. So you'll see here we've got James, uh, Stuart Bache, um, who does all my covers, best cover designer in the business, if you ask me. Um, Mark Smith, um, who will be up in a minute. And over there at the end, Alex from Kalytics. And we've been working really hard over the last 10 months to put together what I think is a really exciting and different proposal for um, a, a way to help authors sell more books and of hopefully make a bit more money too. So I'm going to hand over to Mark now to tell you a little bit about his background and how he sees Fuse going forwards. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I'm Mark as well. Um, hello, everyone. Before I start, I'd just like to say how happy I am to be at my first Indie Author Conference. I spent the last 25 years of my life working in the traditional side of publishing and this is my first time at one of these conferences. So, is that better? Yep. Mark, James and I, when we were thinking about Fuse, spent a lot of time working on what we could all do together and we've come, we've, we've realised that um, this is a great opportunity for the indie author community. Um, all of my career has been in traditional publishing, as I said, and while there's a large number of things that I need to unlearn, there's also um, a lot of things that I can bring from that side of it to the indie authors to um, who, in, you know, from the traditional point of view, have been underserved and underappreciated for, for way too long. So I'm new here, so who am I? Um, you can probably tell from my slightly weird accent um, that although I've been in the UK for 25 years, I didn't forget about my roots in Sydney, Australia. So a long time ago, uh, what feels like a lifetime ago, I left Sydney to go to London because I wanted a career in, in publishing. Um, I'd had a taste of working with authors in Australia and thought that I would see what it was, was like in one of the top publishing markets in the world. In a nutshell, I really loved it and I've had a great experience working with, with authors from all over the world and it's a journey that has sort of taken me to this point today. So here's a potted history of what I've done. So my first proper job in publishing was with the Orion Publishing Group um, where they published authors like Gillian Flynn, Michael Connolly, Maeve Binchy and Harlan Codem, Coben. Sorry. And when I was there, I realised two things. Firstly, that commercial genre fiction was a great business to be in, and that really resonated with me because that's what I like to read myself. And secondly, Orion was, was run by one of the UK's most successful publishing entrepreneurs, a gentleman by the name of Anthony Cheatham. And by working closely with him, I realised that if you, if you had a fair idea what you were doing, were quite brave and had a little bit of luck, it was possible for mere mortals to start their own publishing companies. So that, having worked that out, that set the ball rolling um, for the next 20 years of my life, where I've been lucky enough to have founded and grown three of the UK's most successful independent publishing companies. So some of you might have heard them. Can we? Um, one before that. I, yeah, some, some of you might have heard these. They, um, so Quirkus, Zaffer and Welbeck were the companies that I founded. All have very weird names, I, I, I admit. 
So Quercus is Latin for oak tree. Zephyr is the compound you use to make the colour cobalt blue. And Welbeck is a street in central London. So whilst they all have weird names, the thing that connects all three of them is that the, the one single purpose that each of those companies had was to put authors at the centre of the business and connect them to as many readers as we could, no matter where they were in the world. And you know, it, that's a lot easier said than done. Um, and there's lots of distractions for both publishers and your staff along the way. And I think, you know, when I look back on it, we've had the odd distraction, we've had a financial crisis, we've had a global pandemic, but predominantly I'd say we've stuck to our mission. But maybe the best way to demonstrate what we've done over the last 20 years is have a look at some of the authors that I've published along the way. So Stieg tragically died before, we, before his first books were published in Sweden and was not around to see how many millions and millions of people his writing touched. When we first started our fiction business at Quercus, the Millennium Trilogy were some of the first books that we signed up. And you've all heard the stories about J.K. Rowling, how she got rejection letter after rejection letter. The same thing happened with Stieg. And I'd say that nearly every English language publisher in the world turned it down. So we had a bit of luck because I hired a publisher who'd been fired by Random House and where he had turned Stieg Larsen down twice and he had a change of heart and decided that he would take a gamble on these three books in Sweden that nobody wanted. So our publisher spent a year re-editing each of the manuscripts and I set at the Quercus marketing, marketing team into action to try and replicate the success we could see in Scandinavia and indeed all across Europe. Our initial efforts were terrible. We had retailer, book chain, supermarket, bookshops everywhere telling us they wouldn't stock the books because their readers didn't buy books from people with funny sounding names. <laughs> True story. So then it was time for plan B. I was convinced that if people, people were able to read the books, they would realise how special they were. So we did two things that made a huge difference. We printed a thousand copies of thousand proof copies and in person we handed them out to people on the street, people in parks, people on the train, people on buses and pretty much anyone who would take them. And that started to get, that, that giving, letting people be able to read it gave the first book some traction. The second thing we did was, can I just get some water please? Was before um, the second book was being published. Sorry, thank you. Very dry mouth, I must be nervous. <laughs> Sorry, it's Vegas, yeah. <clears throat> so before the second book was published, on the, Sorry, on the first Thursday in January, which is statistically the most unhappiest day if you're a London commuter, we gave away 50,000 copies of the first book to people going home on the train in the evening. Two months later, well, before, before that, that, for a small company, which we were, we were a small company, that was a very, that was a huge sort of risk and gamble that we took. And I'm not saying that that cost us sort of all our marketing budget, but it was sort of pretty much close to it. But two months later, Stieg Larsson's The Girl Who Played With Fire was the first translated fiction author to reach number one in the UK charts. Following that, um, it started picking up momentum and from there we sold over 100 million copies all around the world in the English language. It's sad that Steve didn't see any of this, but his family and, and the foundation that they established for him were able to support journalists and good causes all around the world. So it's, you know, it, did, it did end up with a happy ending. So the next author, Wilbur Smith, is probably not a household name here in the US, but Wilbur's one of the most successful commercial authors um, over the last 
50 years and he's uh, probably sold about 150 million copies. So from Wilbur's first book, When the Lion Feeds, he found the right combination of adventure and family saga that has kept readers enthralled for generations. So I partnered with Wilbur quite late in his career and I was lucky to learn from you know, who is somebody who's a master storyteller about his views on delighting your audience, knowing what your readers want, and how truly great commercial authors give their readers exactly what they want every single time. They have this, in, this, this knowledge of their, of their reader. And it's that last, that last point that is something that has stayed with me. And so when I work with authors now, commercial authors, commercial fiction authors, I've always had that thought, and Wilbur's thoughts in the back of my mind when we work to them, work, work together to um, help them succeed. So I've just talked about two of two people who you've heard of, two of the most successful authors in the world, and people who, you know, if I push down the shelves, somebody may cut a, cut a limb off to emulate their success. Um, but I doubt you've heard of any of these guys or this imprint 27. But this is exactly what I love about publishing and what keeps me bounding out of bed every morning. This imprint was all about, was dedicated to finding debut authors and taking them to the mass market. And it's always been the most satisfying and rewarding aspect of being in this business for me. Taking new unpublished authors and making their dreams come true and changing their lives is the ultimate reward for a publisher. And that's why I'm so excited today to, and sorry, so excited to be working with Mark and the Fuse team to do the same with indie authors. So now the debut author who we managed to have the most impact with was uh, Heather Morris. So Heather was a hospital administrator um, from Melbourne who was crowdfunding a film script that she was writing based on a series of interviews she'd had with her neighbour. We came across the crowdfunding site, got in contact and got Heather to write, turn the script into a book. We then published it in Australia and the UK, pretty quietly from a marketing point of view, but we positioned it alongside Schindler's List and The Boy of the Striped Pyjamas. Now, this was an important novel based on real life events, tackling very difficult subject, but at the essence, it was a love story. We put it out there and word of mouth happened instantaneously and there were over a thousand five-star reviews within the first month. I had a look yesterday and Heather has 159,000 reviews at an average of 4.6 stars. So before long, Heather was top of the bestseller charts and when the, when the Tattooist of Auschwitz was published here in the US by Macmillan, it stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for two years. So international rights were also sold in 40 countries and the film, which is in production, will be come, coming out in 2024. So if you go back to what I said earlier, you know, making authors' dreams come true, you know, I can't tell you how happy it makes it made me and the rest of the rest of the people who worked on this that we took Heather from a complete novice into an international superstar who is probably one of Australia's most successful authors today. So look, hopefully that gives you a bit of a idea, idea and feel for what I've been doing over the last 20 years. And I look forward to the future of um, working with Fuse. But there's, you know, Fuse is a team and we've been, we've worked very hard together to try and put together the best and the most experienced traditional publishers with the best and the most experienced indie publishers. And, but the person I need to introduce now is the most important person in our business. That's my boss, Jane Harris. Jane has had vast experience in publishing, worked from the, ma the major, major publishing groups down to small independents, across adult, children's, non-fiction and fiction, and she's the most author-centric person I've come across in my career. So she's gonna lead us 
um, hopefully um, we won't go too far astray. But what, what are we offering here? Okay, so what we're, we are trying to do is build a world-class publisher that will be focused solely on indie authors. I truly believe that we have the ability to provide the, the indie author community with the best of indie publishing combined with the best of traditional publishing and take writing careers to new, new levels on a global scale. And how are we going to do this? Well, there are four key things that we're going to concentrate on. Industry-leading marketing, which James will talk more about in the future, but all of our authors will get the same level of advertising and marketing that Mark and James give to their own books. We're also going to translate these books into, into various languages to find authors, readers all around the world. And we're also going to do something that I think is quite unique, which is we're going to traditionally publish in print every single book from every single author that we, that we, we take on. No more print on demand. These are going to be reasonably priced paperbacks or hardcovers, whatever the market, whatever the market demands, so that your readers can have an economical choice when they go to the Amazon page or, or into, in fact, any other retailer um, around the place, they'll be able to see um, and choose whether they want to read you in ebook or paperback. Or, and the last thing we're going to do is put everything into audio as well, in English and also in, translated, uh, in translation as well. So what I think this does for the indie author community it gives your readers lots of choice. You know, do we want an ebook, paperback, audio, you know, different languages? So I think, you know, it's, it's a very comprehensive offering that we're putting together for authors and announcing it today. But we've also thought about the indie authors who are already super successful at reaching their audience, but have a hard time reaching their audience in print. And so we will also offer um, authors with a wide audience print-only deals where they can hang on to all their rights, but we'll look after their traditional publishing for them. And this is, this is a... Um, this is, we pioneered this deal with Mark at my last company, Wellbeck, where we published the John Milton and Atticus Priest titles and put them through all the retailers in the UK and um, around the world as well. And we had great success with both of these series. And whilst Mark was very well known on the digital scent, in the digital side of things, completely unknown in print form, in book form, in all the shops. And after the, those efforts, Mark has now established himself as a top-selling commercial author with the major retailers, um, particularly in the UK. The first book in the Atticus Priest series um, got a Richard and Judy pick. If you, in American, think the Oprah Book Club. Um, and that is already on its way to um, commercial success. So I think there's, there's a lot for you guys to listen to and, and to unpack, but I think there's, there's some interesting things to discuss with you all. Um, so that's me, that's what I've done for the last 20 years, where I think we're going, and where I hope we're gonna be spending the next 20 years of my life. So thank you very much. Thank you. Like that. Uh, I'm going to be uh, brief. I think most of you probably know who me and Mark are here, um, and you know that we are perhaps best known for, Mark's best known for, is Facebook ads and digital advertising, Amazon ads, and using BookBubs properly and focusing that on a profitable uh, project for authors. And that's what we teach, but that's also what we do. And I was on to Mark for a long time about starting an imprint. I saw this as absolutely part and parcel of the independent publishing revolution. It's not contrary to self-publishing. It's 
for a variety of reasons, some authors don't want to self-publish. They might just simply not be any good at it, or they might just not want to ever do it. Or, in the case of Robert, he has passed away and can't do it anymore. And so I saw this need. And I, it's exciting to me. We've got Dakota Kraut here at the conference. There's lots of other small imprints. That wave of independent publishing uh, imprints is as exciting to me as the wave of self-publishing authors. Um, I'm going to talk just briefly, then, a bit about... Um, uh, how we get to implement those skills that we've, uh, we've developed into a system that's going to work for you in terms of Fuse if you choose to go with us. So obviously we use Facebook ads, Amazon ads and BookBub, you'll know that. It's still essential, we say to you, to run your own mailing list. So this is something that uh, we talk to authors about. I would always recommend an author, even if you sign with a traditional publisher, to keep your own mailing list. It's such an important part. It's your list of your authors. And actually, it's the one, I think, the fun bit to do as an author, right? To talk to your readers, to run your Facebook group, without having to worry about all the stress and strain of doing the marketing and being in the Facebook ads. But if necessary, and for some of our authors, we do run their mailing list as well. Uh, of course, a very important part of our mailing list is being able to use it for retargeting uh, and so on. We have a few other tricks that we have in the background. We run a big reader list. Uh, we merged with WWM earlier this year, but we are still uh, owners of Hello Books. We wouldn't direct mail them, obviously. That would be illegal if you know your GDPR rules, but it is actually very useful for us. You can imagine if you're an independent author having 100,000 thriller authors to upload to Facebook and say, find me more people like this. So that's a little trick that we can bring uh, in Fuse for you. Um, so the cross-promotion to other lists of other authors as well is going to be part of it. Do we know what we're doing, Mark? Do we know what we're doing? Well, you mentioned uh, Robert's story earlier and that uh, email that we got from Robert's parents, which was uh, awful and heart-rendering in 2019. But that was the moment I said to Mark, this is an opportunity, and I spoke to his parents, and so we started with these books. Now, Robert had done a pretty good job with these books, and he was selling pretty well up until about a year and a half before health issues really overtook him before his death. And it was interesting, Mark always says there's a direct correlation between running Facebook ads and seeing sales, and we could see this on this chart. By the time they came to us, they were making about $500 a month um, from a high the previous year it was of five figures. So we looked at the package, which is the most important thing at the beginning. We analyzed who the readers were. We got new covers from Stuart Bache, which I think you can agree looked uh, amazing. Uh, I wrote the blurbs. We got the blurbs written between us. We started practicing and testing on ads, got his mailing list, started nurturing and growing that. The result of that is we are able to cut a check for Robert's parents in the thousands every month. And more important to them, I think, is that their son's books are finding new readers, um, or equally as important to them. And that's interesting, uh, little side note to that. So Robert doesn't write any more books, obviously, now. And that does make it difficult, as Craig and others will tell you, the best marketing you can do for your books is to write your next book right. So what do you do when there are no more books uh, to be written? So we have seen a slide off in sales, and I was worried that was going to dwindle away to nothing. But actually, about a year ago, we started to stabilize that. And every month, they're pretty much the same now, and we're still writing a healthy check uh, every month uh, on a profit split with Robert's parents. We've just started branching out into romance, so really thriller. That's what I write, what Mark writes, and we were comfortable with that. So we've just taken on a kind of proving concept with this series, and we're making a small profit with these two books. So when the more books come into that series, we know that we can do this across the genres. And there'll be no restriction on genres and views. We're going to be open to everything. I can't wait to get my teeth into some of the science fi, sci-fi, etc. Let me talk about Kerry Donovan, the second author we took on. So Kerry was a classic person who just didn't quite grasp the marketing side of things and uh, had difficult days marketing and was in, in the market for somebody to take over his book. So we had a look at them, had a look at the reviews the books got. I didn't read his book. I think um, it's an interesting way of looking at things and it might feel odd to people that a publisher doesn't read the books or have them read. But what we cared about was what the readers thought about his book. So you can see that from books that are published. You can see the, uh, the reviews, you can see the sales, and you know these are good books that readers like, and that is good enough for us. We are reader-led in every aspect of this small publishing company. So we took on Kerry's books. We did the same thing that we did with Robert's. We had an analysis session on them. We recovered them, re them. We've recently signed a five-figure audio deal for his books. Um, we are going to print them, but the result for Kerry is that he is a very healthy six-figure-a-year author now. 
Uh, in fact, he emailed me a few months ago and said, I think I'm up to six figures now. And I'm thinking, you made about a quarter of a million. Uh, so you're bad at maths, which is why you couldn't market your books. <laughs> Uh, but we're marketing your books now, and uh, Kerry is very happy with that, and we are really looking at taking Kerry even further and beyond as a, uh, a fantastic seller. So for me, that proved the concept. It was interesting being at Mark's knee for all those years, learning Facebook ads, and I think I'm in a position every now and again to tell Mark something I know about Facebook ads that he doesn't, because I'm at the coalface every day of this. Um, most recently, we, we're very excited about using uh, AI to increase our productivity, to increase the impact of our ads, and uh, we are, it's going to be at the, the coalface throughout the Fuse project is, uh, is innovating as much as possible. Um, to bring all that to fruition for you guys. Okay, well, you probably knew all that anyway about us uh, in terms of uh, what we do because we're famous for it, but I'm going to hand over now to, I think, probably the most secret part and special part of our new offering, uh, which is the, um, what Alex is going to bring us. So, Alex, I'll let you uh, take over. Thank you very much, and hello, everybody. It was in 2018 I was the first time here at Vegas with the indie publishing world. And I thought, my God, this is a community, this is talent, this is passion, and this is ultimately about getting your stories out there. Now, for those of you who know me, I'm all about data. I've never written a book in my life. I maybe will do one now with this company, an autobiography to be written. <clears throat> my time in the data dungeon. And <laughs> coming from this, I thought, when I heard about Fuse and what we were offering, I said, there is so much talent out there, but it's undiscovered. And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm looking at more than a million book data points every month. We have the data on the talent. Now, I talked a lot with, you know, Mark about the traditional publishing world and how traditional publishing author acquisition processes run and you go very often you're confronted with this feedback of there is something about your manuscript we don't quite like and it is submission based you have multiple stakeholders the edited teams it's editorial led it's not sometimes not very commercial I learned highly subjective and it's a very long winded and ultimately frustrating process for everybody involved and with this, it was very clear there can be another way. You just have to go onto the Amazon website and you look at such a fictive books by a writer, Thrill, a very famous thriller, and you look at the book and, my God, 4.9 average star rating, and you look at the blurb and say, yeah, that needs a bit of brushing up. You look at the cover and say, hey, we have Stu in the team who can take a stab at that, although it's not that bad. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> there is no print edition, but the readers love this. And, but look at the sales rank. It's 134,000. That's not good enough for what this book and this author brings to the table. Now, if you look at this at scale, you can, you know, immediately see there is so many of these cases of wonderful books that are already loved not by two readers and friends and family but by you know reviews and ratings that go into the thousands and this led us to this whole new idea of bringing together fuse and calytics and bringing the data power of calytics into this mix of indie and traditional publishing where we take what you already know from following us from authors that already grasp what writing to market is, and many of you already grasp what publishing to, sorry, what market to marketing is, where you have the right channels for your right audience, but now take this to a scalable level, which is publish to market. And I think the traditional publishing industry, although they will not agree to this, they have not grasped this concept at this point in time, and I'm very sure that Fuse will, and it will do so with, with great enthusiasm, expertise, and passion for you, the author community. So this is why Calytics and Fuse got together, and I'm part of the, uh, of the whole team. And since we're data-led, you can take this whole discussion from keywords, from categories, from trend research, from competitive research. We do all that, but in the end of the day, 
it's down to the book and what the readers hold in hand or have on their device. And you all know just as one example, you can basically get a divorce by discussing the cover with your wife or spouse or husband. Now you can cut that process short and save your marriage by simply looking at the data. This is just an arbitrary example of romantic comedy where 51% of the royalties are grasped by one type of cover design. So you can cut the whole process short, do it at scale, but of course there's still a craft part to this, which means, okay, we know what the cover should look like, but obviously next to the traditional and indie publishing expertise and the data power, you need some craft at the table as well. And with this input, I'm more than confident to go to a person like Stu and say, let's have the best romantic comedy cover in this case that the market has ever seen with this input. And with this, I'm very, very enthusiastic about being part of Fuse, about working with the team and with you, the community. And let's see how this is done in real life with the best cover designer of the world, Stu. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I've got about six seconds. Um, I'm Stuart Bache. Um, I am a cover designer, and I'm really pleased to be the art director here at Fuse. Um, so uh, here's a little bit of what we're going to be able to offer everyone, uh, all of our authors. Familiarity theory is, I like to think I coined the phrase, but it's been around for a very long time, so I just kind of stole it. E essentially, is, it's the best way to sell anything. Um, and in terms of books, it's about tapping into genre tropes. It's about um, seeing what works really well and, uh, and, and using that and, and data to be able to push forward and create the best possible covers. It's what I like to think I do. Um, <laughs> I have had the opportunity to work with uh, many designers in my career, and I'm really happy that I'll be able to collaborate with a lot of them. Uh, some of them have specialities that I don't, so uh, uh, you know, we're going to be able to reach out and uh, design all sorts of different covers uh, and the best ones out there. Uh, as Mark Smith touched upon, um, we're going to be able to do some print that goes beyond the standard POD. Uh, premium quality, um, potentially you know, vibrant colors, and even potentially using um, finishes such as spot UV or embossed, things like that to really like, you know, make these covers really sing. Um, I've added versatility here. So when I design a cover, I like to think about how it would work uh, as an image as well as with the type. So if you remove the type, uh, that image needs to work really well in your advertising too. So, but it's, it's not just that, it's also um, going from thumbnail and understanding uh, when you're scrolling on Amazon, uh, instantly knowing, not, not just but having it re readable, but also knowing what the genre is, which kind of goes back to familiarity theory there. Um, this is a little bit about me, really. Um, I have worked in, in publishing for about 20 years. Um, I've worked with most trad publishers, many indie publishers. I currently work in my own business with 250 plus uh, authors a year. Um, I work across every genre. Uh, so I've got a huge amount of experience. I like to consider myself as a sales-led designer, um, which means I'm, I'm market-driven, which means I, I want to th sell your books. It's not about what my aesthetic is or what my ego is. It's about what works best for your story. Um, and in terms of quality, you know, as I mentioned before about working with designers and, you know, I want to be able to work with illustrators, I want to work with, you know, use um, better stock images and use finishes like Spot UV in a really interesting way. Um, and uh, I mentioned adaptability here because this is something I think, well, I know that uh, most publishers don't do. Um, and that is that being able to adapt something as trends change, and we've already done that as part of uh, Fuse with some of the projects that we've worked on, and that's been really exciting to be able to change something w within a couple of weeks. That's something that doesn't happen, sometimes six months to a year, or, or never in trad. Um, here are some of the, uh, the tools we'll be using to sell. As I said, I'm a, a, a sales-led designer. Uh, our primary objective as a company will be to maximize sales. 
Um, I want to be able to uh, use all sorts of expertise in design, so beyond cover design, uh, you know, videos, uh, potentially photo shoots to get unique images. Um, paperback production, obviously, we'll be using and collaborating with some industry-leading printers. And overall, as an umbrella, you know, we'll have a quality control, ma making sure everything works from thumbnail to ebook to paperback. And you know, a cover is uh, really important, obviously, but you know, you have to have other images that work and work really hard. So we're going to be able to create uh, uh, all sorts of images, the best sort of images, whether it's for your Amazon A plus content. Uh, whether it's a, a series of images for your Facebook ads for A-B testing, uh, or, or just as simple as your banner for your website or, or your banner for your uh, Facebook page and your uh, you know, Instagrammable images. I've got like seconds left. Okay, well, here we go. Um, I just want to say something really quickly, and um, that is I've worked with every major trad publisher in the UK and the US, many indie publishers and hundreds of authors. Um, I think from, as you've, heard, uh, as you've already heard, there are a, a huge amount of exciting things uh, here, uh, lots of new things, but I think what we have from every angle is something that is unique, and um, I'm incredibly excited to be part of this. Thank you very much. Okay, that was dizzying. Um, but anyway, we, we got there. So I'm really, really excited about Fuse. I hope you can kind of see from what the kind of the talent we've got on the table here. And also there are others not with us today, others in the team um, who are itching to get started. So just in closing, we're building Fuse based on three principles. The first one is fairness, the second one is excellence, and the third one is opportunity. So fairness, we will be offering authors 50% of royalties, 50-50 split. This is not gonna be a, yeah, of, of profit, yeah. Well, it's not going to be a deal whereby you know, the publisher takes 75%. It's going to be split down the middle. Each contract will have generous reversion terms. So that means if we don't hit the targets that we think we can hit with your books and you're not happy, you can take the books back again. Excellent. That's been said already, I think. So covers and blurbs will be designed by the best to sell books. Digital marketing, that's something that we're quite good at. So you can expect to have campaigns on Facebook, Amazon, BookBub. We're starting to mess around with TikTok and seeing some success there as well. And as things develop, we always make sure that we're at the forefront and we're able to take advantage quickly. Um, publishing decisions will be, will be based on a case-by-case -case basis. So it might be that your book is better in KU, in which case we'll be exclusive with Amazon, or it might be that we decide that it is better as a wide title. And one of the benefits of working with us is that I've been doing this for a long time. I've got really good connections with all of the retailers. And if we think that your book is going to be performing well on Kobo and Apple, that's where it will be. Then finally, opportunity. As Mark said, all books produced in audio, selected books um, translated probably into German to start with, but also in French, Italian, and Spanish. Um, all books get high quality printed copies. They'll be better than uh, print on demand and cheaper, so you can, or we can make more money for you by those formats as well. And some books, the successful books that we think, that we think will do best, will be marketed in brick and mortar stores with things like Richard and Judy promotions and the equivalents here in the US. So timing wise, this is the first time we've announced this, so um, we, you know, we're expecting to get a little bit of interest um, following this. We'll be mentioning it on the podcast in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are launching early next year, but we are accepting um, expressions of interest now, and you can get um, a, a chance to email us at fusebooks.com. Uh, we're all here today. I'm here until um, Friday morning. James is here until um, a bit later, and Mark is here until uh, the same time as me. So if you want to grab us,